Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the parable of the seeds. Jesus was famous for the stories he told. Those stories have come to be called parables. One of his most famous stories is the parable of the seeds. It is the story about a farmer who plants seeds on a variety of different soils. Here is how Luke recorded the story. And when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to hear him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow seed. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path and was trampled underfoot and the birds of the air devoured it. And some seed fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered, because it had no moisture. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell on good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 8. I'm sure that when Jesus finished this story, many in the crowd who listened were howling with laughter. They were saying to each other, what kind of crazy farmer would plant seed on the road, the rocks and the thorns? No good farmer would waste precious seed by planting where it does not have a chance of growing. And that is exactly the reaction that Jesus was looking for. He used stories like this to help identify people who were open to hearing his message. And those who were open to his message asked questions about the deeper meaning of the story. And those who did not want to hear his message found an excuse to walk away and to reject Jesus. Every week, as I share messages on the life Jesus modeled, that's exactly what happens to me. Some get the message and ask for more, while others are looking for a reason to criticize the message and try to warn others not to listen. This is how Jesus put it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Luke chapter 8 and verse 8. Do you have ears to hear the story about the generous farmer? What did you learn from the story? The disciples wanted to discover the deeper meaning to the story, so they asked Jesus what the parable meant. Jesus replied, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 8 and verse 8. Would you like to have the privilege of knowing the secret of the seeds? If you will ask, Jesus will tell you. Jesus said the seed is the word of God, Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. This means that the story Jesus told has nothing to do with farming. The story is about our reaction to receiving the gift of the word of God. We receive the word of God in the form of a tiny seed. We get the seed, we don't get the tree. God does not have any bad seeds and every one of God's seeds is ready to grow. The success of the seed has everything to do with where it lands. The landing spot determines whether there will be a crop. Unlike earthly farmers, Jesus extravagantly sows seed everywhere every day. Jesus has an unlimited supply of seed. Uh, Jesus sows seeds of opportunity to whoever will receive what is given to them. He is sowing seeds into your life right now. And your reaction to his seed is a reflection of the condition of the soil in your heart. Jesus said unprepared hearts are like the seed that fell on the path. They are those who have heard and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Luke chapter 8 
and verse 12. Jesus said, shallow hearts are like the seeds on the rock. There are those who hear the word and receive it with joy, but they have no root. And they believe for a while, and in a time of testing, they fall away. And Jesus said, distracted hearts are like the seeds that fell amongst the thorns. There are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares, the riches, and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. Luke chapter 8 and verse 14. Jesus said, productive hearts are the seeds that land on good soil. These are the ones who, after hearing the word of God, cling to it with an honest and good heart and bear fruit with steadfast endurance. Luke chapter 8 and verse 15. Now, it must be obvious that Jesus was not talking about farming or about regular farmers. So this is a story that Jesus wants to, us to learn about the sowing of spiritual seeds. And Jesus is the spiritual sower. He is our spiritual farmer. And every single day, Jesus drops seeds as ideas to whoever will listen. Every day, Jesus gives everyone ideas that will bring us closer to God. Ask Jesus to open your ears to an idea right now that will help you grow spiritually. Ask Jesus for direction and for wisdom. Ask Jesus to help you understand why he came to earth as a baby. That's a good question. Ask him why he suffered death on a cross by the Romans. Another very good question. Ask him to help you understand why he suffered for you. Every day, Jesus speaks to people who are completely opposed to his message. He opens their eyes and their ears to receive his message if they will respond. Today, you have the opportunity to laugh at this story or to open your heart and discover the secret of the seeds. God has just given you what you need for today. But this gift is in the form of a tiny seed that needs to be cultivated. And one simple step you can take is to write me and ask me for a Bible so that you can read the Word of God for yourself in your own language. The Bible was written by the breath of God and it is protected by the power of God. The seeds that Jesus plants are all good and can all grow when they are planted in the hearts of people who are ready to receive this message. This is the secret of the seed. God is planting an opportunity in your heart today to follow him with your life and allow him to do more for you than you ever imagined possible. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let me pray a few moments for you. Maybe God has uh, touched your heart in a different kind of way today. And a tiny seed has been planted in you to know more about Jesus than you ever have before. It's a seed of hope. I release to you hope that you can know the true and the living God and have a relationship with him. That your name can be written in the book of life. And that you can be sure before you die you'll go directly to heaven. There are seeds of opportunity Maybe you have a yearning for some business, and God is dropping today an idea that will become a business. It's an opportunity for you. God wants you to succeed in this life. Maybe you're at a crossroads of life, and today God has planted a seed of thought. You heard the voice of God say, turn to the left, and I speak that into your spirit. I don't know what your right choice is, but the left choice is the one that God is pushing you towards right now. He is a seed of provision. He has the seed that you need for whatever it is in life that you are facing. And maybe you've had the thought planted in your heart right now that God is willing to heal you. If you need a healing, I release that into your life right now. I believe God is healing somebody with problems with their right arm right now. I say to your right arm, be healed in the name of Jesus. I spoke to a man who was having trouble a number of uh, 
months ago about his business because he had a problem with his right leg. And after his right leg was healed, his business could go forward. Another man had had a stroke, and he could not go about his work, and he had to have a driver, and he had to be on a walker and a cane. And God touched him and restored him, and he's back to driving and pursuing his business. God is dropping thoughts, spiritual ideas into your life right now at this very moment. If you've had a dream of a man in a white vision, a a man in a white robe, that's a tremendous seed from heaven of God wanting to speak to you and redirect the course of your life. May God help you understand this message as you have heard the seeds of parable tonight. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.